Hello friends, this is Sanjay. In this video, we will be covering the 30 EVS questions from the CTET paper 1 from the December 2021 examination. And this specific paper was conducted on the 8th of January of 2022. This is uh, the English version of the video. If you prefer the answers and explanations in Hindi, then there is a separate video where I have covered the same questions in Hindi as well, which you can watch. The CTET December 2021 examination started from the 16th of December of 2021 and it was conducted all the way till the 21st of January of 2022. So which means that there are 23 different versions of paper 1 that we can solve from this specific exam and 30 questions per subject. So which means that we will be solving 690 questions per subject from this paper alone or this exam alone. And this particular paper was conducted on the 8th of January of 2022. So in this video series, we will be covering all these question papers and all the subjects from these question papers. So please do subscribe to our channel. The earth is round like a globe and the people of which one of the following countries stand on the earth upside down with respect to us. So now this question has been taken from a class 5 EVS textbook from a chapter called Sunita in space, which talks about uh, Sunita Williams, who is an Indian origin astronaut. and. It mentions that people in Argentina and India are actually standing upside down in relation with each other. That is, if there is a globe and India is here, then people in Argentina are standing upside down in comparison with us. Therefore, here the answer is Argentina because that is the answer that is also mentioned in the lesson. Pochampalli is a town where most of the families are weavers and the special cloth that they weave is called Pochampalli. The town where these uh, beautiful bright colored pochampalli saris are made is part of which state this question has been taken from the class 4 evs textbook from a chapter which itself is called pochampalli which is about the pochampalli town which is in telangana which is famous for the pochampalli saris now if you look at uh, very old question papers the answer might say andhra pradesh because once upon a time pochampalli was part of the undivided andhra pradesh but subsequently since andhra and telangana were divided from the erstwhile Andhra state. So the correct answer now is Telangana. Following are the steps of uh, in the process of growing onion crops, which are not given in the proper sequence. The correct sequence of the above steps is what? So these are the steps that are part of growing onion crops. So we are supposed to order them in the correct sequence. This question has been taken from the class 4 EVS textbook from a chapter called Basavas farm. Now the first step when it uh, comes to growing onions or most of the other crops is digging the soil. Therefore, B has to come first. So let's write B. And then you have to sow the seeds. Therefore, C has to come next. So then it will be C. And after sowing the seeds, you'll start watering the plants or watering the crops and weeds will start growing. So weeds are the unwanted plants. Therefore, weeding is the process of removing the unwanted plants. Therefore, A should come next. And after that, you will pluck them out when the onions are ready to be harvested. Therefore, E should come at the fourth position. And the last step is cutting the dried leaves from the top of the onion so that the onions will become ready to be transported to the market. Therefore, D is the last step. So D is the last step. So the correct sequence should be B, C, A, E, D. Now, when we look at the answer choices, B, C, A, E, D is the last option. Therefore, this is the correct answer. In a book, a map of Golconda Fort is printed. At the bottom of the map, a scale is printed, which says that one centimeter of the map is equal to 110 meters in real life. The measured distance between Ibrahim Burj and Masha Burj is 13.3 centimeters in the map. So the actual distance between these two points in real life is approximately what? So in the map, it is mentioned that one centimeter is equal to 110 meters. So the distance between these two points is 13 point three centimeter which means that to find the distance in real life we have to do a simple cross multiplication so 13.3 into 110 that will give us 1463 and this will be in meters all the answer choices are in kilometers therefore we have to divide this by 1000 and we will get 1.463 kilometers now None of these answer choices exactly match, but we have been asked to find the approximate distance. Now 1.463 is approximately rounded up to 1.5 kilometers. Therefore, that is the correct answer. 
select from the following the correct statements about al-biruni a scholar who visited our country more than a thousand years ago now the first statement says he was a traveler who visited our country and noted down the details of all that he observed this is correct next he came from afghanistan this is wrong because al-biruni came from iran and not from afghanistan therefore since b is incorrect let's look at the options and eliminate all the options which have b in it the first one has b so eliminated next has b eliminated the third one does not have b so we'll retain that the last one also has b in it so eliminated so we are left with only one option that is a c d and e which is the correct answer here so this question has been taken from the class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called every drop counts where albiruni's uh, writings are mentioned in the context that his book is very helpful in knowing about our past and our cultural heritage and he also specifically wrote about the skills of the indians in making ponds and other water storage which could store water during the rainy season which could be used during the summer season so it was rain water harvesting in the ancient times so albiruni wrote about that and that's why he is mentioned in this chapter about every drop counts so the correct answer here is a c d and e consider the following animals that is snake turtle frog and crocodile select from the following the common characteristic found in all these animals now this question has been taken from the class 9 science textbook from a chapter called diversity in living organisms now if you look at snake turtle frog and crocodile right some of them have chambered hearts some of them may live in water and as well as land as well and some of them have uh, their bodies covered with scales but the one common factor among all these four is that all of them lay eggs therefore this is the correct answer if you are located in ahmedabad that is in gujarat and draw on the map of india a straight line between ahmedabad and delhi the direction of delhi from ahmedabad will be what so ahmedabad is in gujarat so it will be somewhere here and delhi is here so if we were to draw a line on the map from ahmedabad towards delhi so you will see that the direction is roughly northeast from ahmedabad to delhi so the correct answer here is northeast an express train covers a distance of 144 kilometers in 2 hours its speed in meters per second is what so this train is covering 144 kilometers and it takes 2 hours to cover this distance so if we divide 144 by 2 we will get 72 so 72 is the kilometers per hour that the train is traveling in or its speed therefore we have 72 in kilometers per hour and we have to convert it into meters per second to arrive at the answer therefore 72 into 1000 because every kilometer has 1000 meters therefore 72 kilometers is 72000 meters and in every hour there are 60 minutes and every minute has 60 seconds therefore there are 3600 seconds in every hour so if we divide the meters by the seconds then we'll get meters per second therefore we divide this ones a 20s a so it is 20 meters per second so the answer is 20 meters per second in mizoram when harvesting work is over the villagers collect and celebrate they get together to cook and eat sing and also dance the name of their special dance is what now this question has been taken from the class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called whose forests where there is some information about mizoram and it is mentioned there that uh, there is a special dance form that is practiced in mizoram it is called chera so the correct answer here is chera and this is an important question because uh, there are very frequently asked question about mizoram and the dance form that is practiced there and the type of farming that is practiced there and what is special about uh, the farming that is done in mizoram so you have to read this chapter that is class 5 evs whose forests there is a species of birds which makes uh, beautifully woven nests the female looks at all the nests and chooses one that she likes the most and decides in which to lay her eggs the name of this species of bird is what now this question has been taken from the class 4 evs textbook from a chapter called a busy month where there is some information about different types of birds and it is mentioned there that the male weaver bird makes beautifully woven nests so the correct answer here is weaver bird even if you have not read this chapter if you look at the question it says woven nests 
so o1 is nothing but made by a weaver therefore this gives you a clue that it has to be weaver bird this question is asking us how many union territories are there in india however all the answer choices given here are incorrect because even when this exam started in december of 2021 or even when this specific paper was conducted in january of 2022 india had only eight union territories however as per the answer key it says nine union territories this question should have been challenged but looks like nobody challenged it therefore the answer key continues to be in error and it says nine union territories when you are preparing for the exam as on the date of the exam you should be aware of what is the total number of states in india and what is the total number of union territories in india at the date or at the time of the exam and your answer should be as per the latest information following organisms respectively belong to which class of animals so lizard is a reptile therefore we can eliminate the second option and the third option because both of them have mammal in the first place now the second one bat is actually a mammal right therefore we can eliminate the first option because it has bird here right so lizard is a reptile bat is a mammal indian robin is a bird and scorpion is an insect therefore the last option is correct and this question has been taken from class 9 science textbook from a chapter called diversity in living organisms arinath is a snake charmer when he plays his musical instrument named the bean the snake swings his head to and fro from its sound the snake responds to the sound of the musical instrument the bean because of which of the following reasons now this question has been taken from the class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called super senses where there is uh, some information given that snakes can actually hear through the vibrations in the ground they do not have external ears so they do not hear the normal sounds that what we can hear right they can feel or sense the vibrations in the ground therefore when we look at all the options the first one says the smell of the bean is pleasant the smell of the bean may or may not be pleasant but the snake is not responding to the smell therefore this is incorrect next the snake can directly listen to the sound produced by the bean through outer ears now as uh, it is written in the textbook as well the snake does not have any external ears or outer ears therefore this is also incorrect statement the third one says the eyes of the snake do not follow the motion of the bean the eyes of the snake actually follow the motion of the bean therefore the statement is incorrect because it says do not follow the last one is the vibrations produced by the bean are transmitted through the ground now this is the correct answer here because snakes can actually hear or rather feel the vibration of the bean that is transmitted through the ground and that is what is given in the textbook as well in this question it is mentioned that there are two girls x and y who have uh, got clinical pathology reports which are more or less blood reports and it is mentioned in those reports that uh, x has a hemoglobin level of 10.5 grams per deciliter and y has a hemoglobin level of 12.5 so what can be concluded on the basis of this report now this question has been taken from the class 5 evs textbook from a chapter called a treat for mosquitoes right because mosquitoes drink blood and they are saying that normal hemoglobin range should be between 12 to 16 grams per deciliter therefore since x has a hemoglobin level of 10.5 so x has anemia and y is at 12.5 which is more than the minimum of 12 therefore we can say that uh, y does not have anemia so x is suffering from anemia whereas y is not therefore the first option is the correct answer here match the following in this question we have been given four different locations and five different types of houses that are built so we have to match the locations with the various types of houses and identify which of these houses are built in these locations now this question has been taken from the ncert class 3 evs textbook from a chapter called a house like this where different locations and the types of houses built in uh, all these locations are mentioned now when we look at uh, the options here the first one is assam in assam the houses are built at least in the rural part of assam the houses are built on strong bamboo pillars because it rains a lot in assam and the houses are built at an elevation or at a height so that the flood waters don't get into the house therefore a should match with 5 
if you look at the options in all the options a matches with 5 so that's a correct uh, match next in rajasthan the rural parts of rajasthan the houses are made of mud and the roofs are made of thorny bushes because thorny bushes are easily available there and mud is a good insulator which keeps the houses relatively cooler therefore d should match with 3 when we look at all the options in option 1 d matches with 3 in option 4 d matches with 3 so we can eliminate the options where d does not match with 3 next ladakh in ladakh the houses are made of stones and they have a wooden floor and ceiling because it gets very cold in ladakh therefore b should match with 2 when we look at the remaining two options b matches with 2 in option 1 and it does not match in option 4 therefore option 4 can be eliminated therefore the correct answer here is option 1 so you should be thoroughly familiar with the information given in the evs class 3 textbook chapter 18 that is a house like this because uh, this is a very frequently asked question a new student from a different country joins your class which predominantly consists of local students you want to use this opportunity to teach students the best value of diversity and build inclusiveness which of these activities is best suited for this purpose now this question can be answered in two ways one is we can refer to the ncrt class 345 evs syllabus document which clearly mentions that discussions can act as a scaffolding for their learning or we can also look at all the answer choices and see which one of them provides the maximum interaction for the students and which one of them is a two-way interaction and not a one-way interaction now when we look at the first statement it says have local students tell the new student on what should or should not be done in your region this is a one-way interaction because the local students are telling the new student but the local students are not getting any information from the new student therefore this is just one way so this can be eliminated because this option is more like giving instructions to the new student on what can be done what should not be done right the next one have a discussion in class about the similarities and differences and practices in each child's home this is the best option and the correct answer here because here what is happening is the new student who has come from a different country also gets an opportunity to teach the local students about what happens at his home and what used to happen in his country so the children the local children in your class also get an opportunity to learn from the new student and the new student is also getting to know about the local customs traditions and they are discussing about the similarities and the differences between the two locations and the two types of cultures therefore this is the best option and a discussion is the best way of uh, achieving this uh, diversity and inclusiveness and this is also mentioned in the syllabus document so this is the correct answer if you look at the other two statements next one says uh, tell the class about the new students country including how people behave what they value etc this again is a one way information because the teacher is telling the class about the new students country including how the people behave and what they value right so the new student is not getting anything in return right so here only the teacher is talking to the class so this is one way therefore this can be eliminated then the last one says have each student in class voice their attitudes and knowledge about the other country now here again the local students are getting an opportunity to talk about their attitudes and their knowledge about the other country from where the new student has come from but what is the new student getting in return is he getting an opportunity to speak there is nothing mentioned here about that therefore this also can be eliminated so the best option which has a two-way interaction where both the new student and the local students are getting an opportunity to share their views and share their uh, thoughts about what happens or what they think happens in the other country and they are learning from each other so this is option two which is the best answer which of the following features of a video conferencing app can be used to best demonstrate how communication can be done without speaking so now this is a very simple question because uh, all of us are very familiar with uh, how zoom or any other video conferencing app is used and we can use emojis or emoticons and when we use a emoji say an emoji like this it shows that i'm just joking right i'm not saying it i'm just using this emoji and i'm conveying some thoughts or some feelings and this is communication 
which is being done without speaking because I don't have to say anything. I just have to include one emoji. Therefore, here GIF in the chat is the correct answer. So using emojis, emoticons, stickers are all ways of communicating without speaking in a video conferencing app. Which of the following exercises most closely aligns with the constructivist approach? Now in the constructivist approach, the theory says that children actively construct meaning and knowledge by building on their experience, by using their background knowledge and by reflecting on what they have learned, what they have heard and what they have seen. Therefore, when we look at uh, the answer choices, we might see that more than one statements are correct. So we have to identify which one of them most closely aligns with the constructivist approach. That is, which is the strongest statement which is close to a constructivist approach. Now the first one says using pictures of animal ears to identify their adaptation. This sounds like a possible correct answer because children are using their prior knowledge, their background knowledge to build on some knowledge. Therefore, let us park this statement and see if there is a better option. The next one, drawing the outlines of different types of leaves after plucking them from a nearby garden. So drawing the outlines of different types of leaves, this is not a constructivist approach. They are just doing some drawing. Therefore, this can be eliminated. The next one, using a graphic organizer to explain the uses of different structures of a fort. Here, the teacher is actually using a graphic organizer to explain the uses of different structures of a fort. So, the children are not actually doing any, they are not building on their experience and they are not actively participating in this probably. Therefore, this can be eliminated because this is more of a teacher-led exercise. The next one says, using a globe to identify different countries that students may have heard of. Now, this is probably the best answer because here it is uh, being uh, clearly conveyed that there is a globe that is being used. So, the globe is in the classroom and the students are actively participating because they are identifying the different countries that they may have heard of. So, some students may have heard of uh, some countries, some other students may have heard of a different set of countries. So, together they are coming with coming up with a larger group of countries that they can talk about. So they are gaining from each other's knowledge or background. Therefore, this is the best option among the four. Therefore, let us eliminate the first one as well. And the correct answer is option four. Which of the following is the best example of students engaged in active learning? Now, active learning is essentially doing things and thinking about what they are doing and this is called active learning. So they have to do things and also think about what they are doing. Now, when we look at uh, the four options, we might see that there might be more than one correct answer here, but we have to identify which one of them is the best example of active learning. So the first one says uh, students add their thoughts on a mind map drawn on the blackboard about the different types of work that people do. So here students are actually participating in the creation of this mind map and they are also in adding information that they have with them that is some children might know about different types of occupations that are uh, uh, that are held by the people in their family or in their community therefore they are contributing from their viewpoint therefore this is the best example of active learning so this has to be the correct answer let's also look at the other options the next one is in pairs students list down the different parts of a flower that were mentioned in the evs textbook so here even though they are working in pairs, the students are just looking at the textbook and listing down the different parts of a flower. Therefore, this is not active learning. They are just looking at the textbook and extracting information from the textbook. Therefore, this can be eliminated. The next option says, student draw the different patterns people made on saris after watching the video on Pochampalli saris. Now here, they are watching a video about Pochampalli saris and they are drawing the patterns that are used by the people who are making the Pochampalli saris. So here the children are not actually building on their knowledge. They are just trying to remember what they have seen in the video and draw that. Therefore, this cannot be the correct answer at all because this is not active learning. The last one says, student take notes from the blackboard about different types of material used in the construction of buildings. This is absolutely a one way activity. They're just looking at the blackboard and taking notes. So they might or might not have understood what the teacher has actually written on the blackboard. Therefore, this is not active learning at all. Therefore, when we look at the four statements, the best example of active learning is statement one. What would be an authentic task with respect to a lesson on cooking? 
Now, to answer this question, we first have to understand what is this authentic task. Now, there is a long definition of what authentic task is all about, but the simplest definition is that if students are given an opportunity where they can use the knowledge that they have learned in theory in the class and actually use it in the real world and do some activity around it, then that is an authentic task. So, if you have given your children a lesson on cooking, so if they can actually cook something, so that would be an authentic task. Now, let's look at the options. The first one says showing students how you make a sandwich in the classroom with real ingredients. Now here, the students are not actually doing this, right? It's the teacher who is showing the students. Therefore, this is not an authentic task. This is just a demonstration. The next one, asking students to write a list of dishes that are made with wheat flour. Now this again is just a list of dishes that they are writing. So this is not an authentic task and especially not a experiment or a hands-on activity that they can do with regards to cooking. Therefore, this also can be eliminated. The next one says conducting a fireless cooking fair in your school where students make and sell food. So here the children are getting to actually use the knowledge of cooking that they have and for safety purpose it is a fireless cooking fair. So they can make sandwiches or they can make any other uh, items like uh, juices or uh, any other thing which does not require a fire which does not require any heating. Therefore here conducting a fireless cooking fair where students can make and sell food. So this gives an opportunity to students to actually do what they have learnt in class. If they have read about cooking or if they have been explained about what cooking is all about, then they can actually use the knowledge and see that they can actually make some money out of it, even if it is just for fun. Therefore, this is an authentic task. So this option C has to be the correct answer. The last statement says creating a class garden where all the students are asked to grow plants like tomato, chili, etc. Now, this is also an authentic task in a way because the children are actually creating a class garden and all the children are growing plants like tomato, chili, etc. So the students are getting hands-on knowledge and hands-on experience about how plants are grown. Therefore, this is also an authentic task. However, this is not about cooking. So this is about gardening, about how plants grow. And here the question is asking us with respect to cooking. Right? So, if it is just a question about which of these is an authentic task, then both option C and D would be authentic tasks. But here they are asking us which of these is an authentic task with respect to cooking. Therefore, the last one is the about gardening or about how plants grow. Therefore, this cannot be a correct answer. Therefore, the authentic task about cooking is option 3. In a chapter about sharing feelings, one student asks, why are you teaching us about feelings in EVS? So which of the following responses best explains the scope of learning this chapter in EVS? Now the chapter that is being referred to here is a chapter called Saying Without Speaking, which is in class 3 EVS textbook. In this uh, chapter, there is uh, some information or some talk about how feelings can be shared. Now, when we look at uh, all the answer choices, the first one says we interact with other people all the time and each person is different. So understanding our own feelings and the other person's feelings are important for living in the society. This sounds like a very logical and a correct answer. Therefore, let us consider this as correct. Let's see if there is a better answer than this. The next one says we interact with other people all the time. Some of the some of them are uh, differently abled and being sensitive to their feelings is important for living in the society. Now here we are not trying to just learn about the feelings of differently abled people, right? We are trying to learn about everybody's feeling. This is about sharing feelings, right? Therefore, this statement is incorrect because sharing feelings is not just in the context of differently abled people. The next one is some of you may want to become psychologists when you grow up and understanding your own and others feelings are important. Now here, we are not talking about anybody become a psychologist here. We are, talk we are talking to class 3 children, right? Because this particular question is based on a class 3 chapter. So, we are just trying to teach the basics to children. We are not trying to prepare them for any uh, career plan. Therefore, for them to become a psychologist at some point in the future, they are learning about sharing feelings now. That is definitely not important and not relevant. Therefore, this can be eliminated. And the last statement is, Feelings are closely related to hormones in the human body. As you are learning about different parts of the human body, it is important for you to understand feelings also. Now here, class 3 children, hormones, not happening. 
right this is not something which is being taught to class 3 children therefore this statement is incorrect because this is too high level for class 3 children so the best option is statement 1 which says that we are interacting with people all the time so if we understand our own feelings and also understand the others uh, person's feelings then it, it becomes easier for us to live in this society therefore this is the best option Uzaira and Samir are uh, looking at different countries on the globe and Uzaira says see there are lines between the different countries on this globe are there such lines even on the earth and Samir says there must be because there are there on the map of india in this book and there are lines between different states also this about text is used to introduce latitudes and longitudes to students of grade 5 which of these questions would help uzaira and samir understand these lines better so now we have to identify which of these following questions will encourage uzaira and samir to think about the reasons or the purpose behind why latitudes and longitudes such as the lines which are drawn on the globes and on maps what might be their use what might be their purpose so which of these questions will force them or like encourage them at least to think about the reasons behind this so now when we look at uh, the answer choices the second option says that when when why do you use a graph book with lines to plot points in geometry right in geometry if you know the x axis coordinates and the y axis coordinate then you can easily pinpoint a specific point on the graph paper because you know the x and the y coordinates so similarly if you know the latitude and the longitude then you can pinpoint any specific place on the map or in the globe so using a graph book with lines to plot points in geometry is very similar to using latitudes and longitudes and plotting specific places on the globe or on the map therefore the second question which is why do you use a graph book this is the best question that can encourage them to think along that lines and this is the answer as per the answer key as well for the topic historical monuments which of these is a specific measurable and attainable learning objective to answer this question we can refer to the class 5 evs textbook a note for teachers and parents where is there is a mention that chapter 10 uses historical monuments to introduce children to the various techniques designs and uses of materials water arrangements etc of earlier times that is the purpose of the various things that are used to build historical monuments now even when you look at uh, the answer choices the first one says that uh, students will know why stone was used to build monuments in the past so if students just know about why stone was used to build monuments so this is just a one way street here you are just telling the students giving some information so that they know about it right so here this is not a specific and learning and measurable learning objective because you just know that they learned about one thing one item that is why stone is used therefore this is not an extensive and measurable learning objective therefore this can be eliminated next one is students will draw an architectural plan of uh, the taj mahal to appropriate skill now we are talking about evs here evs class 3 4 5 children so architectural plans to appropriate skill this is much too high level and this can be discarded even if this is a specific measurable and attainable learning objective this can be discarded because it doesn't make sense at class 3 4 5 evs next students will classify the different materials used in building the golconda fort based on their purpose so if you take students to the golconda fort or if you show them some videos or if you tell them about it and you tell them about the different material that is used in the fort why wood was used in some places why stone is used in some places why mortar or lime is used in some places and why metal such as uh, metal cannons and metal fittings are used in some places so children can understand why different types of materials are used to build historical monuments and then if you ask them to classify the different materials used in the building then you have taught them something and you are also measuring or assessing what they have learnt from all that you have taught therefore this is a specific task it is also measurable because if you give them 10 different types of items if they can at least answer about four or five of those you know at what level have they learnt so that is measurable and it is attainable because it is a simple task relatively simple task so it is attainable therefore this is the best option and this has to be the correct answer the last one is students will help preserve historical monuments recognizing the importance of these so again class 3 4 5 children 
so you are just trying to teach them about these historical monuments and you are telling them these are important historical monuments but how much of uh, that can be helpful where they are actually going to recognize the importance and they are going to help preserve these uh, monuments so that is something that is uh, much too early for grade 3 4 5 therefore this is also an option that can be discarded therefore the third option is the correct answer you have brought one large bottle of glue or gum to your classroom for students to use for their projects for an upcoming exam exhibition and uh, you have told the students that uh, the bottle will not be replaced once it is finished and they will have to use it wisely which of the below activities would most help students engage in the idea of using alternative resources for resources that are limited in quantity now here the resource that we are talking about is the bottle of glue and you are saying that if the glue gets over if the students use it up then it is not going to get replaced now the children are preparing for the upcoming examination so in most possible uh, it is uh, very likely that uh, the gum might get used up completely so what you are trying to do here is uh, trying to encourage students to come up with using alternative resources right so when you look at the answer choices the first one says put up a poster that displays the projects where glue can be used and where it cannot now this is just helping students understand where this existing bottle of glue can be used or not used so it is not helping them understand about alternative things that they can use instead of glue the next statement is ask students to list down the different materials that are sticky even as they work on the projects now here if you look at the various types of materials that are sticky for example if you go to some of the post offices in the rural areas you'll see that uh, the gum that is kept outside the post office is actually made of maida right it is boiled maida which is uh, kept in the form of gum or it can be some uh, gum that comes from some trees water is mixed in it and it is kept as uh, glue that can be used uh, to stick letters or stamps therefore there are different types of alternative materials that can be used because they are sticky and they can work as gum or glue therefore by asking students to think about the different materials that are sticky they can think about alternative resources that can be used if this bottle of gum gets over therefore this is the correct answer here the next one says ask students to write in a common register on how many spoons of glue that they have taken each time when and why so this again is just a stock keeping exercise to see how this bottle of glue got used up you are not talking about what would be the alternatives when this bottle of glue gets used up therefore this is not a question that is uh, asking him to think about alternatives the last one ask students to use glue by adding water to it here again you are not thinking about alternatives you are just trying to extend or uh, to use this existing bottle of glue as much as possible and you are not thinking about alternatives therefore this also is incorrect which of the following is the best example of arriving at a specific conclusion using experimentation now here you have a question that needs to be answered and to answer that question you will conduct an experiment and on the basis of the result of uh, that experiment you will arrive at a specific conclusion that is one answer right now when we look at uh, the four options the first one says understanding which liquid flows quicker by adding a drop of each to a plate and tilting it that is which liquid flows quicker is the question adding a drop of it on a plate and tilting it is the experiment and on the basis of this you are going to arrive at one conclusion that is one answer as to which liquid flows quicker therefore this can be a possible correct answer next one finding out how far the human eye can see by asking each student to read an alphabet from a distance this again you have a question how far can the human eye see and you are conducting an experiment by asking each of the students to read the alphabet from a distance so on the basis of this you will come at one conclusion or one answer therefore this also is a possible correct answer however here there is a issue with the question itself because there seems to be an ambiguity because uh, the vision is variable among different types of children that is some children may have short sight some children may have long sight some children may have excellent vision therefore asking each student to read alphabet from a distance it might not lead to a perfect answer or a perfect concrete solution right or concrete uh, specific conclusion therefore this is an imperfect experiment therefore this can be eliminated so even though this meets most of the requirements this is imperfect so we will eliminate this the next one 
understanding which vegetable spoils quicker by counting the number of days it uh, takes for them to go rotten now here again you have a question which vegetable spoils quicker and you are conducting an experiment by letting them rot and you are counting the number of days for them to rot therefore this is also a possible correct answer so we will check this out the last one finding out different sources of water by going on a field trip around your district here you are finding different sources of water so you are not arriving at a specific conclusion that is you are not arriving at one answer you are here there will be multiple answers therefore this cannot be the option here in this question so we have uh, two options option 1 and option 3 which are possibly correct now as per the answer key option 1 that is understanding which liquid flows quicker this is the correct answer however even option 3 can be a possible correct answer therefore this question is ambiguous and it should have been challenged however it was not challenged however if you see this specific question in any of your uh, upcoming uh, exams then you can select understanding which liquid flows uh, quicker as the correct answer which of the following is the most relevant as a hook or opening for introducing the topic of seasons that is if you are introducing the topic of seasons for class 3 4 or 5 evs students so you have to use a hook or a opening so what is a hook or a opening so the hook or an opening can be a question it can be a statement or it can be an action which is intended to grab attention so that they will be interested in what you are going to tell after that right so now when you look at uh, the options the first one says describing the differences between summer and winter uh, in terms of temperature clothing activities plants etc so you are giving a description so this is not a specific question statement or action this is a description so this is quite boring so this cannot be a hook or an opening therefore this is eliminated next showing students a hat a raincoat and a sweater and asking them which of these they have used now this is definitely a lot more interesting because children will be interested to see what is this discussion all about why are you showing them a hat a raincoat and a sweater and children can try to relate these uh, these objects to their own experience as to when have they used it so this is definitely a very good hook or an opening so this might be the correct answer so let us park it the next one taking students on a walk and asking them to describe how plants will change in the following season now this can be a possible hook or an opening however this will be effective if you have already taught them about seasons because you are asking them to describe how plants will change the following season that is the next season so they will be able to answer this only if they know what is the current season and what is the next season therefore this cannot be a hook or an opening to introduce the topic of seasons therefore will eliminate this and the last one says showing students a video of sunrise to sunset and to sunrise again with corresponding changes in people's activities this is a long video right and you are not exactly giving them a context of what you are trying to teach them you are just showing them a video and you are expecting them to understand something so this cannot be the most relevant hook or opening so we will eliminate this so the best answer here is showing students an act a hat a raincoat and a sweater and asking them which of these they have used so that you can relate them to different seasons and you can start the lesson from there so for this is the best answer if there is a learning objective which says that uh, students will be able to apply the concept of communicable versus non communicable communicable diseases so which of the following assessment questions are best tests for this learning objective that is which of these questions can identify whether the children know the difference between communicable and non communicable diseases so when you look at uh, all the options the first one says why do we use masks to prevent the spread of covid but not to prevent the spread of diabetes so now the answer here would be covid is a communicable disease and diabetes is a non communicable disease therefore if children know the answer to this question it shows that they know the difference between communicable and non communicable diseases therefore this is the best answer if you look at the other options the next one says uh, if one of your parents has malaria how can you minimize your own risk of getting it so this is just talking about one communicable disease and your uh, children are uh, going to tell you whether they are aware of how to minimize the spread of malaria right therefore this is not going to tell if uh, the children know the difference between communicable and non communicable diseases therefore this cannot be the answer choice next which disease carrying insects can you prevent by maintaining clean surroundings here again disease carrying insects can spread 
communicable diseases so this is not talking about non communicable diseases therefore this is not an answer the last one what are the different types of illnesses caused by bacteria and viruses so you are just talking about illnesses caused by bacteria and viruses so you are not trying to differentiate between communicable and non communicable diseases therefore this also cannot be the answer choice therefore the best answer is option 1 a teacher wants to use technology to teach her students about different world heritage sites and understand their architecture their historical background etc better which of the following technologies would be best suited for this purpose now when we look at uh, the four options that are given we have to look at uh, which option gives the most interactive experience and the most immersive experience the first one is simulation software so this is a 2d experience then animation video this again will be a 2d experience virtual reality will be in 3d and this will also allow the children to actually interact with what they are seeing they can move in the virtual space therefore this is most interactive among the options the last one is graphic design software so this is just a software it is not talking about uh, uh, what has been designed using this uh, software right so this is a uh, incorrect option so among the three possible correct options the best option here is virtual reality therefore that is the correct answer the teacher wants to teach the concept of a food preservation which of the following food items is best suited to teach this concept now this question is based on the ncert class 5 evs textbook a chapter called mangoes round the year where there is an example given where mangoes can be preserved by making them into mamidi chandra that is aam papad and this question is also based on the class 8 science textbook microorganisms friend or foe which talks about the spoilage of food due to microorganisms and now when you look at uh, all the answer choices the last one unripe mango is unprocessed food this is raw food this is not preserved food therefore this cannot be the answer curd is also not a way of preserving food because curd lasts for a couple of days and it cannot be preserved for a longer time so this is also not the correct answer now papad and chips both of them are food items which are actually processed and intended to stay as edible food for a longer time therefore papad can be the correct answer or chips can also be the correct answer therefore the answer as per the answer key is both papad and chips miss vaishnavi is teaching the idea of interdependence of things in the environment using examples from the community which of the following examples is best suited to to this concept now when we talk about interdependence of things in the environment an example could be that uh, the kitchen waste or the biodegradable waste that is generated in our houses is taken to the garbage disposal ground there it is composted or uh, there is vermiculture that is uh, with earthworms it is converted into fertilizer which is used by plants which create food or which grow food which is again consumed by human beings therefore this is the interdependence of things in nature therefore the best answer here would be garbage disposal ground however as per the answer key the correct answer is a barber now a barber or a police station can be examples of interdependence in the social context where different people do different types of work and how they help each other but as far as interdependence of things in the environment is concerned the best answer is garbage disposal ground so this question should have been challenged because this should have been the correct answer answer however because it was not challenged the correct answer as per the answer key is a barber and with that we have solved the 30 evs questions from this uh, question paper if you have any questions comments or feedback please post them in the comments below and uh, please do give this video one like and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and if your friend, friends are also preparing for uh, the similar exams then please do share this video with them so that you can help them out and it will also help our channel so that's it for now Take care stay safe and uh, I will see you again in our next video